What is up everyone? Welcome to my very uh, cluttered basement here. Uh, my name is Jason and what we're going to talk about today is something that I believe you can do in your own home if you have this issue and save yourself probably $100 to $150. So we're going to talk about that now. So I was having an issue with our furnace where it would just, it would stop running. We'd wake up in the morning and it would be, you know, 60, 62 degrees and that is not where we set our thermostat at. So I knew something was wrong. We were getting an error message. So what I tried doing is I flipped the switch off, flipped the switch back on. And what would happen is the fan would start up, everything would run as, as intended, the flames would come on and then they would kick right back off. And then it would wait a little bit and the flames would come on and then they would kick right back off. And so a little bit of my own research. And again, I don't want this to be a how-to video. I want you to go maybe look at another video or two uh, before you do this um, and maybe get comfortable with your particular brand of furnace first. Uh, but this is not a difficult fix. So if that's what's happening, flames come on, flames go off, it is likely that your flame sensor is not working. So there's a little stick in there that prevents your furnace from just pumping propane into your basement and blowing your house up. However, when that goes wrong, it prevents you from getting heat from a functioning furnace. So I wanna show you what it is, what you can do about it, what I did, and merely provide you some confidence that even if you are an help, a helpless idiot like myself, you can do this. And for $45, my furnace now will work for who knows how long, but it works now. And it was only 45 bucks, probably would have been 150, $200 to get somebody to come out here and service it and do the same thing. So if this is your issue, highly recommend trying, uh, getting comfortable with it and doing this yourself. So let's talk about what we have. So this right here is the flame sensor for my furnace. You can see up here on it, right up here, it's kind of like black and charred. So you can do one of two things. Last winter all year, I hold, just use one of these scrub brushes. And what you can do is you can take it and just kind of shine up, just get some of the debris off there. If Again, this is if you're having the same issue that I'm having, as you take this out of the furnace, which will go over to my furnace in a minute, and just clean it up, put it back in, and it'll work for, you know, I would get anywhere from a month to, you know, towards the end here, and the reason I finally bought a new one and replaced it is because I was getting, you know, seven to 10 days where I'd have to open my furnace up and take it out, clean it off, put it back in, and that just wasn't worth it. So let's go over to the furnace. So before you do anything, flip the switch off. That I know is the uh, electric switch for my furnace, and then we'll get you set up here. So I'll unscrew these. Take that off, get it out of the way. Now my particular flame sensor is this guy right here, and that's the little bolt we gotta take out, it's a quarter inch. So we'll do that. And it's mine since it's got the hook on the end of it, you kinda turn it a little bit to get it past, past everything and pull it out. And there you go. And then to change it, there's the little metal connector at the end. It is literally as simple as just pulling it off. Now it's off. Take your new one, slide it back in there until it clicks, put it back in the hole, put the bolt back on, put the plate back on, hopefully without struggling as much as I just did, and you're back up and running. So then the last thing is, so where do you get the part from? All I did was I found a local HVAC company uh, that sold that brand of furnace, uh, called them up, gave them the serial number, they had the part, I went over there, picked it up from them, and that's it, 45 bucks, furnace works, and I did something that a long time ago I wouldn't have had confidence in doing, because again, I am a mere helpless idiot. But again, not a how-to video, maybe go look at another couple of videos before you go do some doing something like this, but I promise, anyone can do this and you are gonna save yourself a ton of money. You can either, like I said, clean it off and see how well that'll work for you, that's free, or you can buy the flame sensor, which is anywhere from like 15 to probably 60 bucks, depending on the model, uh, where you get it from, etc. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, you can do this. It's not something you have to pay somebody to do. It's super simple. And uh, thank you for watching.